Ladies and gentlemen, this is an Amiga. And this is an Amiga, but my Amiga car was cheaper than my Amiga watch. Well, that's a lie, because this one was from Egypt. Uh, but this wasn't from Egypt, it was from Facebook Marketplace. And I'm gonna tell you all about the Amiga that is also a Cadillac and a Holden, and quite rare. So jump in the car with me for an automotive adventure through Wikipedia and the website How Many Left and the owner's manual and general internet research. But I'm gonna tell you all about this car. And that was a terrible introduction, but I haven't got much time tonight, so we're gonna stay with it. I'm walking over here, I don't know why. Now, I bet you didn't know that the Vauxhall Amiga Estate does not have a release hatch from inside, so I had to block the latch there with my air freshener. Now, at their peak, there were more than six and a half thousand Vauxhall Amigas. So in 2012, which is the last date I've got statistics for, six and a half thousand Vauxhall Amigas. But today, there's only 603. So this is a rare car. Now there's two versions of the Amiga, the Amiga A and the Amiga B, and then the Amiga B too, but none of those are supplements. The Amiga A, we sort of know it as the Vauxhall Carlton, that's 1986 to 1994, but this one is an Amiga B, which is 1990, 19... shouldn't just read off Wikipedia really, there's other YouTube channels that do that. Now the Amiga B, which is this one, arrived in 1994, lasting until 2004, with a facelift in 1999. The facelifted model was known as the Amiga B2, which I think if you're vegan, that's the one that you have to supplement because you don't get enough of it from meat. Anyway, dietary recommendations aside, this is a very nice car. However, it's not nice enough to be a Cadillac, which makes it quite strange because it was actually sold as a Cadillac Cetera. You could buy a Cadillac Cetera, which was the one with the V6 engine in America. Seems very odd to me in Britain because it's just a Vauxhall but they were trying to pull the wool over the eyes and trying to hide the fact that the Cadillac brand had essentially failed by that point. It was also sold in Australia as a Holden Commodore. Uh, I believe that this was following on from a long legacy of Commodores. Can you still buy them these days, the Commodore? If you're Australian and watching, let me know what you thought of what was actually a Vauxhall Amiga. You know it as the Commodore, we know it as the Vauxhall Amiga, and if you're watching from the USA, tell me how badly you thought the Cadillac Cotera was if you were actually used to Cadillacs. So the Amiga was available with a choice of engines. Uh, in four-cylinder form, it was two litre and 2.2. That's what this is, 16 valve. It was also available with both a 2.5, 2.6, 3 litre and 3.2 litre V6 engines, the V6 ones being the most desirable. In diesel form, it was a 2 litre, 2.2 or 2.5. Obviously a choice of manual or automatic transmissions. Now, as I said, these are cheaper to buy than an Amiga wristwatch. What would you rather have? Well, this car can actually take you places. And look at the size of the boot. It's absolutely gigantic. I can fit in here two whole Harry Potter books, and these are huge. But my question about the boot of the Amiga is, can you do an army roll inside the car? Let's find out. Jeff, you haven't done an army roll for 10 years. It's gonna be fine. Ow! Okay, you can, but you need to keep your legs low. Let's try that again. That really hurt. Right, low legs, low legs. Yes! You can do an army roll into the back of a Vauxhall Amiga. That's gonna bruise, that is. Right, let's do, is there a serious part to this review? I don't think there is. Let's do the drive, <laughs> let's do the driving the car bit. Now the 2.2 litre engine replaced the two litre in 1999. He's got 143 horsepower and around 205 newton metres of torque. Now I think this engine is perfectly adequate for the car. Interestingly, the Amiga, although it's a large car, it's as big as the biggest Volvos of the day, it doesn't feel it when you drive it. It doesn't actually feel heavy. It reminds me of the way a Saab feels, which obviously is interesting because by this point, GM, who own Vauxhall and Opel, also owned Saab. So in some way, it's got a little bit of DNA in it from a Saab, but not in the sort of respectable hereditary way that you're supposed to get DNA in a kind of weird incestuous someone slept with their cousin sort of way. Does that make sense? In my head, that made sense, but I appreciate if that's not the terminology that they'd use on say, the Grand Tour. All jokes aside and commando rolls aside, what a great looking car that is. So it's from what, 2001? 
so it's 22 years old and it still looks fantastic. This one has clearly been very well cared for. It has had some paintwork. You can see on the other side, it has had a little bit of paintwork. Uh, it's sort of, it's not 50 shades of silver like many cars I've seen before, but it's definitely got evidence of a little bit of touch up. But I think that's good because it shows that the car was loved. And wearing the official vehicle stickers, which you'll remember uh, were left over from the Jaguar X-Type, I think it looks really smart. I was clearing my house out earlier and I found some official vehicle stickers. I thought, yeah, I'll slide those onto the back of the Amiga. And it really suits it. All the Chinese people in Malvern shitting themselves right now. The 2.2 litre engine is mated to an automatic gearbox. Probably shouldn't use the word mated after what I just said. Uh, it's got sport mode, it's got winter mode, and it seems to go just fine, to be fair. As soon as we get to the sign that's a white circle with a black diagonal across it, I'm gonna floor it. And for those of you that are watching from abroad, that's the sign that in Britain means you can go as fast as you like. No, I'm only joking. That's the national speed limit sign, which means on this road, we can do 60 miles an hour. So I should be able to do a quick 0 to 60 because I'm on a very, very quiet road and nobody's around because there's about to be a massive thunderstorm and everybody's hiding from it. Revs to five and a half thousand RPMs and there's 60. So it's not exactly, come out of sport mode now, it's not going to light your world on fire, but then if you want your world to be lit on fire, probably don't buy a very large Vauxhall estate car. We've got heated seats, we've got a sunroof, we even have a four CD changer, a CD player in there, obviously ventilation for both sides, but being a Vauxhall, all the buttons have faded away and everything is disappearing. This one's only done 92,000 miles. The Amiga was used by the British police in both marked and unmarked form. Hence, I think a silver Amiga really does deserve some police car wrapping. So maybe if I come across another Amiga at some point in the future, we can do the genuine Battenberg style Amiga. But I'd do the pool ice car for emergency pool ice because it's quite hot. And if you need ice for your pool in an emergency, Emergency, who are you going to call? You're going to call the pool ice people. Speaking of emergencies, my ankle is really, really hurting and my wife is going to kill me. One other thing that I find quite strange about my Amiga, look at the dial for the sunroof. I don't really see the point in that. What's wrong with just having a dart, like a button that you just, you just hold it down and then it's open in the position that you want it in. See what I mean? Just seems a bit strange, but what a huge gargantuan vehicle. So what's my recommendation then? Should you buy a Vauxhall Amiga? Uh, yes, I think you should. It was car of the year in Ireland in I think 1995. It was Japanese import car of the year in I think the same year. It's a great looking thing with lots of space and it is extremely comfortable. I would quite happily jump in this car and drive all the way to Scotland to deliver it to one of my most crazy subscribers. For example, Stephen Young, who I know loves voxels and hates me filming all the scenery and constantly buying Volvos. Stephen Young, this one was for you. Yeah, seriously though, uh, I've tried to do this review quite quickly and under a time constraint, but I really quite like the Amiga. I've genuinely run around in it all day moving all manner of things because as, as I've said a thousand times, we're trying to move house and it's been superb. It's comfortable, I like the auto box, I like the engine, it's responsive enough, I quite like the handling. There's obviously a drop link gone on the front so it does knock a little bit, but it's a very respectable, nice, easy to live with car. Although I do suspect that it would be quite heavy on the old petrol if you were to keep this one as a long-termer. But I just think cars like this are disappearing and they really deserve to be preserved. You don't get cars that look like this anymore. You don't get cars that are this airy. There's so much glass, there's so much space. It's a genuinely nice place to be, especially with the sunroof. Modern estate cars, they don't have the same lines. They don't have the same size. They don't, they literally, 
I hate that word, but they literally don't build cars like this anymore. If you went to Vauxhall and said, I'd like to buy a large estate car, even if you bought an Insignia, the way the roof line is shaped and the way the safety features are shaped and the way there's so much padding around the doors and everything, you don't have this real land yacht cruisy kind of feel that you get with these big estate cars of the late 90s and early 2000s. They're a hangover of the big station wagons that we used to have back in the day that the Americans used to go on family road trips with. The estate car or the station wagon is part and parcel of growing up and part and parcel of having a family and having kids and get out and doing stuff. And I feel really sad that for most people, the estate car as a go-to car of choice has been replaced by the SUV, the sport utility vehicle that nobody ever uses to do anything sporty with. And then when you do want to do something sporty that requires you to go on some grass, your 23 inch wheels are too big. The Vauxhall Amiga may well be the car for you. And as I've already demonstrated, it's big enough to do a commando roll in the back of. And who doesn't want that in a car? Never actually set out to make a car review video today. Um, I'm hiding from the wife because she's trying to make me tidy the house. And I said, I've just got to pop out. There's something really important that I've got to do. And this is it. Commando rolling into the back of an Amiga. I hope you learned something there in that very haphazard Jeff Buys Cars video. Back to the real core of what Jeff Buys Cars is really about. Fun, not very good videos about old, not very good cars. Thank you very much for watching. Jeff buys cars. YouTube's most boring car and conversation and current affairs channel.